Hey guys, and welcome to our first ever Patreon chosen game. For those of you that don't know, people who pledge to actually just just give me a little bit of support each month on patreon.com slash SebastianSB get the ability to vote on what our little Patreon sponsored series is going to be. And this month, hey, the votes are in and the results are... That's right, our first ever Patreon series is going to be Crash Bandicoot, suggested by Trolls Christensen, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Thank you for your support, this is definitely going to be interesting. Oh man, this game came out in 1996, which means I was six. Alrighty. Let's give this a shot. Now, I actually grew up playing Crash Bandicoot as a kid, but I don't think I played this particular one. This might actually be an entirely new experience to me. I believe I grew up playing with, actually with my dad, I was playing uh, Crash Bandicoot. Two or three, The Wrath of Cortex. Oh yeah, there's not really settings to look through here. Okay. I'm so used to checking settings to tweak everything to my liking in every game I play nowadays. That wasn't the case back in Crash Bandicoot. Alright. Oh, hey. Yeah, this is different, I think. I think the one I played had a hub world that you'd spawn in. That's probably Wrath of Cortex. This one has a straight-up Donkey Kong-style, like, map screen. Sanity Beach. Let's see how I go. North Sanity Beach. You don't want to mix them up. I like that music, don't they? So this is the old days. Oh, I'm already playing. <laughs> I'm playing this on the PS3, so it's very picture-in-picture -picture looking right now. I was waiting for the letterbox to go away, but no, that's just what this game looks like the whole time I'm playing it. Because <laughs> that's how it's represented. Oh, good thing I guessed correctly about which button was jump. Let's see. Let's go ahead for a quick second. Enabled joysticks. Oh, never mind. This game apparently does not support joysticks at all. Oh well. Or I'm doing it wrong. It's totally possible. Hey, Krabby. So this is just a, just a, just a pretty straightforward run in direction and do platforming correctly. It's actually interesting. Like, it's some some of Crash Bandicoot goes into side-scrolling platformer mode, but a lot of it's this weird f sort of run forward in this direction mode. Look at that. There's some level design. Right off the bat, they throw a metal box at me. I'm like, you can't break metal boxes. This is that's actually really important for them to establish later, because at some point I'll be platforming and I'm kind of in trouble if I destroy everything. I, they also just had a moment where I destroyed a, uh, I just attacked an apple and sent it flying. C checkpoint. Checkpoint. You, I thought it was at the first second there. I thought it was gonna spell crash, and I had to get a C R A S H boxes. Ooh. We have an, our invincibility star of this game is when you get this mask. The tr this this tribal mask character is something that I would continue my my uh, my nostalgia would continually mix it up. Look, branching paths. I would always mix it up with the oh god, oh that was those were ghost boxes. Good to know. But I I would continually mix up the uh, hello. This weird tribal mask character with the character from uh, Banjo Kazooie, another game that I was playing, eh, roughly the same time. I know they didn't come out at the same time, but you know what? Release dates matter a lot less when you're a kid, because you're kind of just getting whatever game you find and whatever game your parents get you and stuff like that. You're not really that aware of what exactly when stuff comes out or how, what's new and what's old. I grew up playing in uh, a NES, even though a NES is actually already old by the time I, I was born. Hey, we just created a new platform. I'm pretty sure the Super Nintendo was already a few years old when I was born. But I grew up with a NES, and so for the longest time I just had the impression that the NES was less old than it was. This is nice. A little bit of plat- this is- is this my first platform? No, well, I'm sure Rogue Legacy counts as a platformer. I played I played games that are very heavy on the pl platforming elements, but haven't played a straight up one like this. 
But yeah, this is oddly enough, Crash is almost like a predecessor to a. Uh, oh yeah, here's a here's a, a bouncing block. I maybe I have played this game before. This is, these exact levels actually feel familiar to me. Oops! You keep destroying my uh, resources. TNT is bad for you. Don't don't hit it. It can be it can have its uses, but you don't want to you don't want to just sit there and hit it with your melee attacks. Oh god! So I'm pretty sure it'll blow up on you. Hello. Give me your resources. Yeah, the way that everything's such a, a straight path where you run aw away from the screen really does make the game feel like a runner. Like, I I'm sure better players, for them, this game's just designed to be played running in a straight line and never pausing for even a moment. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here, like, collecting things and trying to be careful and cautious and look at everything. Which is probably not the best crash approach, but it's what I'm used to doing. Yeah! Super mask mode. Maybe not super useful here, because we're not really surrounded by enemies to defend against. It might make me immune to the damage that that stuff could do to me, but I'm not sure. Still satisfying to absolutely destroy everything around you. Hey! We got two, we got two of the, uh... What's her name? Candy? I don't know. Oh wow, combo. You, apparently, the when you knock one of them away, it hits all of them at once. This is all a mixture of me learning things and not... Uh, I don't think I can hit that consistently. There's a reason why that's a one-up, because it's risky. And I'm okay with pressing forward and not dying in pursuit of a TNT-covered uh, health bit. Uh-oh. Well, messed that up. So that's a, that's a little intro to the health system in this game. Ooh. Bonus round for finding all three of those. Now, now that it was hard in this case. Side-scrolling. Hello. Give me that one-up. Hey, girl. Hey, you up. Oh, two percent complete. Sweet. Wait, was I supposed to like interact with her? New password. What? What the fuck is going? Are these? Oh, that's my memory card. Holy crap! I was like, what am I looking at? It's like, oh, these are, these are shadow tower saves. That's more shadow tower save. That's silent bomber, and that's Jedi power battles. I didn't recognize. I thought these were the worlds of Crash at first. I'm like, what the hell are those? Those are all just adorable little shadow tower icons. It's hard for me to reconcile the idea that shadow tower existed back when I was playing. The, like, it, it exists on the same console as Crash Bandicoot, and you can see icons of that game in here. Alright, well, I'll, I'll save. Makes sense to save. I just did a, a, a checkpoint world. I mean, a, a bonus world. I know what words mean. Don't judge me. That's my first save point. Wow. So do you have to get bonus worlds to save? As a kid, I was very used to the idea of uh, restarting worlds and starting games from the beginning over and over again. So it didn't really phase me if I wasn't saving stuff, so I didn't really think about it back then, but nowadays I'm much more concerned about my time, of course. I mean, I've, I've played the first level of, sh of various games so many times. Like, endless nostalgia for the first world. Oh no! <laughs> they beat you with all the boxes that you missed. They say I did great, though. Whatever that land- whatever that- wherever that is on their grading scale. Yeah, I would play the first level of Banjo Kazooie so many times, and I have so much nostalgia for it. Never beat the rest of the game until I was uh, 23, probably. <laughs> the Great Gate. What a great, great gate, great, 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 great. What? Don't know where I was going with that. I'll just accept it. I'm super late to acknowledge this because I got sidetracked by several other things, but I took a hit earlier. I'll call attention to it when it happens again, I guess. Oops. Let's try going for the other side instead. Oops. All right, but when I took damage, my little, uh, my little, uh, to my little, my, the mask friend freaked out for a moment. Oh god, I've sabotaged myself, haven't I? Oh, I got it. So like, he, see, he changed color. He was, he was all blue and green earlier. Now he's orange and yellow. So that's your hit points in this game. So he earlier he made a weird magical, like, complaining noise. So that's gonna bounce. So I've created a hazard for myself. One that I can accomplish. Can I get on top of it? Oh! 
just not risk that anymore. Get out of here. Skedaddle. We're in one of those side track, those uh, side scrolling moments we ha that we had before. I mean, that I mentioned before. Can I get on top of that? Sure can. All right. This is fairly different from the popular games you would have expected back then, I guess, because there was a whole lot of Mario and stuff like that where he didn't really attack stuff directly as much. I, eh. Wait, let's see, Mario 64. Yeah, Mario 64 wasn't out yet for like another three years, I think. So yeah, at the time it was much less normal for Mario or any platformer to really be beating on people. So this is probably their Donnie Dog's attempt at a edgy platformer by having a platformer that, uh, Actually, like, melees people to death. And he wears shorts, and he's so cool. I'm really fucking... Wow. I'm astonishingly bad at these, uh... These bouncy platforms, apparently. Huh? What I need to do is I just need to stop on that last one and bounce on it twice. This is the mistake I'm making. Because you get a forward momentum that makes it... There we go. That makes it hard to get over. We got this. We got this. Don't you be judging me, brah. Get out of here. Come on, man. Oh, I should have jumped on him, and I've wasted my chance at a health upgrade. Ooh. I believe getting that next health piece was going to make me go into crazy mask mode and just blaze through. Oh, I destroyed the bonus level token. Gotta get my shit together, apparently. That's right, I'm swearing in my Bash Crash Bandicoot series. I-D-G-A-F. Why did I say it that way? Oh. So it's, it's, it is all slippy slidey. Wanted to test for it to be sure, because it was making me slow down when I was going up it. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, hey, buddy. Ha <laughs> ha! It's a door. Oh, wow, that worked. Weird. Who's all spiky? This place is turning to be pretty hazard. Wow. People live here? Excuse me? Hey! Bonus token. Too bad I can't actually get it, because I missed the other one. At least I assume that's how it works. I don't think... I don't think you can just get three overall. I think it's specifically get the three or something. Oh, level's over. I wonder if I could, could have jumped to o off of that faster to get something. But yeah, they want you to break every single box. I wonder how long this game is, actually. I can't really think of it. I'm sure that all the games back from back here were shorter than I remember them being. My, uh... My, uh, endless capacity for repetition as a child... Oops. Would have made me not notice when something was, uh... Short. Because I'd be replaying stuff all the time and just playing whatever's available to me. Alright. Oh yeah, this is a boulder level. This is where the, uh, runner comparison becomes extra apt. So our goal is just to keep away from that and try not to die. They're good about moving the camera just right, so that I don't... I'm less likely to get killed along the way. Ah, oh, they gave you a little pause moment there. They're they're forgiving about it. I think the reason for that is that you move at a... Uh-oh. You move at a fixed speed, and the boulder moves at a fixed speed. So if you're messing up... Oh! Should've jumped over that. You move at a fixed speed, and the uh, boulder moves at a fixed speed, so it makes sense for them to be like... We need to, every now and then, stop the boulder. And let have a new one chase them, because then they can have more control over the space it ha it is from you. Otherwise, they're more at risk of uh, of having you accidentally just like run left or right a little bit too much and slight make a slight take a slightly uh, inefficient path, and then suddenly the boulder's catching up on you just because it's moving faster and it's single-mindedness at going perfectly straight. All right, let's be ready for that bridge this time, like competent players. Gosh dang. There we go. We're learning how to play video game. Oh, Jesus. Huh? No. I am a fuck up. I don't think I noticed as a kid just how bad the textures were back then. Just, just, just due to age. Seeing that everything's covered in little boxes and things like that. It's like, that's just what they're made of. I'm sure I died against this a lot, though. I think I have a lot of memories of dying against against boulders in these games. And this is a really This has to, this might be the biggest change of pace for this channel's ever had, actually. The only other one I can think of is that uh early on in the channel when I was when I was pretty much exclusively playing RPGs, which is still mostly true, but I sort of expanded the puzzles since then. Uh there was a period where there was a moment where I na 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 I beat you and here's a checkpoint. Uh 
At one point I played girls like robots when I was otherwise playing Dark Souls and stuff like that pretty much exclusively. So that was definitely a change of pace. This is a little freaky. You have to definitely be centered if you're going to land on those. Oh. There we go. Here they're using apples to guide me through the level. It's a really good it's a really good level design actually. They're making up for the fact that you can't see stuff around you. Huh. You don't have peripheral vision with this camera really. I mean you can't see ahead of you at least. Oh, this part makes me nervous. Oh, okay, I made it. You don't have peripheral vision, or at least forward vision very much, so what they do is they put apples to guide your path so that you know where the obstacles are probably going to be, which is pretty nice. I'm pretty sure there's a bonus in each level if you actually go and, uh... Yeah, I think there's some kind of bonus in each level if you actually get 100% of every box. I'm sure you're specifically supposed to get 100% of every box in every level or something at some point for a completionist run. Upstream. Hello. Gammy. There we go. Alright, this might be a little tough for the platforming. Just try to be careful. Oh no. I got tripped up by an evil bird. I mean, <laughs> fish. So we'll have to watch out for where those guys are jumping back and forth. And time this, time this correctly. Have our nice little... F no, I fucked it up. I apparently timed that completely wrong. Come back here. Come back here, you little thing. There we go. A lot of this stuff is perfectly spaced out to make the jumping work perfectly, which is nice, because, yeah, I don't feel like I... Oh! You have to be careful when you choose to spin, because the spin kind of makes you keep moving forward if you're currently in motion. And that's how you get wrecked like I did. Oh! Wow. I'm jumping way too early on that one. I'm expecting it to be out of the way by the time I jump there, but that's not how that hitbox works. Wow, hitbox. There's a word I didn't know back when I actually played this game. Along with, like, democracy. In other words, because I was six, probably. <laughs> it's a bad example. Just gotta be careful. Yeah. I think that's actually a bouncy one? I don't know. I forgot what the, the what those types of lines mean. Oh, is he not- is he not on the, uh... Oh yeah, he's not on the- on the, uh, lily pad. Oh, shit. Good to know, lily pads collapse. Also, I should probably grab this again. Alright, so I'm learning a lot of new mechanics in this level. And that's why I'm dying. I'm gonna blame it on that, and just ignore the fact that I'm playing a kid's game that I've probably, almost certainly played all the way through before. Lily pad, come back here. Obey me, I am the player, I am the reason you exist. Yay. Alright. Let's try not to ruin myself this time. Just time it accordingly to not run into that guy. Yeah. Nailing this. Pro crash player right here. Hey, checkpoint. That'll make up for my lack of skill. So we have to now we have two things to time. Nailed it. Please don't hit me. Okay, cool. Hi TNT. I would like to not. Oh, can I thread the needle here? No, I can't. Ah. Okay, we're good. We're fine. I forgot about the timer aspect of the TNT. Good to know. Although I think if you, I think if you melee TNT, it might explode instantly. And I'm not in a huge hurry to test it. But yeah, I do remember that platforming has a timing element to it. Because there's going to be parts where we have to platform on TNT. We won't really have a choice. What have I got? Yeah. Uh-oh. Did not know that those periodically closed. I thought they were closing on a timer once I landed on them. Maybe these ones are just different. They're being nice with the checkpoints, though. Huh. Yeah, the green ones are timing-based, I'm sure. And the blue ones are... Uh, no, the blue ones are timing based and the green ones are just, they initiate a timer when you land on them. Hey, bonus level. Oh. You've ruined me. Uh-oh. Almost ruined that. Yeah! Two extra lives. Lady. I'm 11% I'm complete. So, is this a... This might be the only way you save in this game, is by doing bonus levels. Interesting. 5 out of 32 levels. Ah, oh, not a very long game. Coolio. Oh yeah, 0 out of 2 golden keys, 0 out of 26 diamonds. That's almost 1 diamond per level. I'm sure they're just super secret, uh, hidden spots. Alright. Yeah, this will be a quick series. 
I guess we're gonna we're probably gonna be voting on another pa uh, Patreon chosen series this month then. Howdy, y'alls. Here we go. I'm, I'm sh I'll have to make up my mind on whether I want to uh, do another vote or just go to second place. Because this month we did have a pretty clear second place, which I won't announce yet. <laughs> oh, don't judge me. I mean, that's all you do. It's really just what you. It's just what you do every day. It's what you live for, isn't it? You dirty, dirty, dirty game. Papu, papu. Say what? I need an adult. <laughs> oh, you look like the first boss to me. You look like the first racist boss. Uh oh, what's he doing? He's got a big belly. Oh, oh, he spins. Don't, definitely not. Okay, how do I hurt you? Oh. How do I hurt you? Ah. Okay. Time to have that old school experience of how do I hit the. Th oh, I jumped on him. Okay. Sure. A game where you have a melee attack, but you kill everything Mario style by jumping on them instead. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah. Of course I have one. F oh, he landed on me. Did I just... Did I win? Or did I die? Maybe they're doing a trampoline joke with how fat he was. That was an experience. <laughs> just as a quick reminder, this is a Patreon-sponsored series. If you want to help choose what future shows are going to be, you can go to patreon.com slash SebastianSB for more information.